Hi, I'm Dennis Weiss from Eagle Communications. Welcome to our town, and today our special guest is Tori Barrett from the Abilene Area Chamber of Commerce. Tori is the executive director thereof. We're very proud to have her in Abilene. She's doing a great job for our community, and I want to talk about some of the good things that are going on in Abilene that the chamber's in the middle of. So. Welcome. Thank you very much, and thank you for those nice compliments. I always say uh, Dennis compliments me too much, but it is very nice to have that and to have that good reception. There's Been no here. such thing as too much. Now, there <laughs> yeah. can be too little, but not too much. <laughs> That's probably true. Mm -hmm. the, um, we are in the middle of a renaissance. You know, we're filmed in Abilene, I think. We're sitting in the Malat Room in the Abilene Public Library and so fitting that we are because this library experienced a renaissance a few years ago when mm -hmm. the citizens of Abilene voted a, a uh, I don't remember, I think it may be a quarter cent sales tax or something like that, but to renovate the library and the pool at the same time. But the library is simply fantastic. It's restored to much of its original glory, the way it was built, if you will. It's a very open place for people to come and enjoy. When we started filming, there was a couple gentlemen over there reading the newspapers and magazines. But it's a great room that says, that says to me every time I'm here, you know, if you want to make something better, you have to do some work to get there. And it generally, in a community, takes a partnership between organizations and business and individuals. So the Chamber of Commerce, how many members do we have? Right now we have 143, um, but that's really growing every week and every month. And that shows really great promise to the Chamber, but not only them, but the business community in general, because it is the end of the year. So the fact that we're still getting new members buying into what we stand for in October, November, December is fantastic. It just shows great growth and just great business progress in Abilene. I'd like to point out uh, to people watching that may not know much about the chamber. It's a member organization and it's built around commerce. Our members are businesses or people interested in business. And our mission is to help business grow and prosper. And we believe as, as an organization that business prospers a community by, by providing the mechanism of wealth that helps all things grow. Mm -hmm. So, but there's a lot of activity going on in Abilene. Uh, the city has a neighborhood revitalization plan. It's in the works to revitalize, revitalize downtown Abilene, has a very specific plan working. It looks great from, mm -hmm. this, from this perspective. Um, the entire planning and zoning code that hasn't been looked at since 1995 is under review and one of the main points of review I think is from the perspective of business it says does our planning and zoning code help us grow or does it not exactly. that's all very good but you are working with some downtown businesses on some very specific things that help downtown business grow and i want you to tell us about that yeah definitely um something that the chamber of commerce is working on right now we are in partnership with ada which is the abilene downtown association it's similar to the chamber um, it's just downtown businesses working together to kind of make business grow, but it's focused more on the downtown area, whereas the chamber is focused in the entire Abilene area and surrounding areas. So we have representatives from the chamber involved and representatives from ADA, as well as representatives from the Convention and Visitors Bureau in this project. And what this project is, is it's called Small Business Saturday. It really stemmed from the kind of nationwide campaign that goes on. And for those of you that are unfamiliar, Black Friday is the day after Thanksgiving, and that's when most shoppers do their shopping at the big box stores. They go to the Manhattans, the Kansas Cities, the Topekas, the Wichitas, and get those big box store shopping done. Well, Small Business Saturday is the nationwide campaign that was started a couple years ago, and it encourages those same shoppers to go back to their hometowns and shop local after they've shopped Black Friday. So it really promotes both days, but it's really emphasized on that shop local campaign and the shop local that you want to have in your community. And so we are working on a Small Business Saturday campaign for Abilene. I've always been amazed by the name Black Friday. Mm -hmm. um, it, for me who hates to go shopping at that when there's a bunch of people in a rush, Black Friday's like Black Death. Yep. <laughs> but Black Friday, the name is really refers to when in the retail world, the, the, the income statement goes from red to, to black. black. 
that exactly right. all year long retail businesses operate in the red and from the Friday after Thanksgiving until the year is over is when they make their profit. Mm -hmm. That's an astounding thing to think about if you think about the challenges of running a business. But it also makes us focus on all success it has a narrow window of opportunity and it's, for me it's, it's why it's so exciting to see the uh, city council in Abilene, the uh, Dickinson County Commission, to see the hospital board and what they've done with Memorial Health System all at the same time and this in the and the school board is about to announce and to work on some mm -hmm. growth plans for there as well so every elected county-wide or or the majority of the population in the city of Abilene every single elected board is working on some plan that's aggressive in nature mm -hmm. uh, that is a narrow window of opportunity for our county and our city and our, our residents thereof I think it's great it's fantastic, you know, in a small community and really any community in general, the biggest thing you need is the buy-in and the biggest thing you need is participation from all those entities. You need it from the government side, you need it from the business side, you need it from the community member side that maybe is not a business owner but is a frontline worker. You need that buy-in from all facets of the community in order to get any progress or any growth started and therefore sustained. And the fact that our Abilene business is working together with other business organizations, whether it be the Chamber, the ADA, or just businesses in general, and the fact that all our elected officials are working on that growth strategy just speaks volumes to Abilene. And you know, it speaks volumes to the fact that everyone in the community is really focused and on the same thing by working on different projects. It'll, you know, eventually lead us to the same goal. In the neighborhood revitalization plan um, that the city's working on, it's really focused on the, a, a much smaller view of downtown. And, and yes. I, I think that's appropriate because that's where the concentration of opportunity can mm -hmm. be because of the concentration of open buildings and open space in those buildings. So opportunity always comes from fixing some problem. So problems by themselves are not bad. It's just how you, what you choose to do with them. If you let a problem dwell and remain, then it's always a problem. But if you choose to turn that problem into growth, then it's an opportunity. Exactly. I think that's where we are. And I, I'm just so, I'm pleased to be sitting here as a portion of that, as a, as a business person. Now, Brian and I are both employee owners here at Eagle Communications. We're an employee owned company, so we're business owners. We're taxpayers. We, we work, we live in the community and, and buy, do commerce in the community every day. So it's very important to us as a business owner to know that Abilene has a opportunity to grow instead of decline. That's good for my business and it's good for every business on Main Street Abilene. You're exactly right, Dennis. You know, just speaking toward the neighborhood revitalization district, the city has one in place already, and the one that you know Dennis and I are speaking toward is the downtown revitalization district, like he mentioned, specifically for a concentrated area of downtown. This kind of really stemmed from, like he said, just the opportunity that downtown presents to have different types of businesses there and to really make um, a downtown life of sorts when you have your business everywhere else and you have the different you know, eating establishments, you have different entertainment, bringing all of that downtown and trying to have new life and new growth and really tie in not only community members, but the tourists that come to Abilene. You know, Abilene is very lucky. We have a very varied, you know, very varied um, amount That's of attractions. Lot, right? very, yeah, it's very. a lot, very varied, there you go. <laughs> um, but we have so many attractions that bring other people into Abilene that therefore stay in Abilene and shop and they stay at our hotels and they eat at our restaurants. And so anything that we can do to not only let the community members have more to do and, you know, kind of experience Abilene in a new way themselves, but if you bring more people into town, you're going to grow Abilene that way. Many of our residents right now were tourists first. And so Abilene's doing a lot to capitalize on community members and visitors to Abilene, which you can't really have better than that. We're, we're catering to everybody. The opportunity of the future is always has a fork in the road. Um, there's a book in the, in the 
rare books section behind us I was looking at earlier. Earlier, I would say it was, it was probably written maybe in the 30s or 40s. I pulled it out and just looked at it briefly because this title is so uh, grabbing and it's called War and Disease. And the foreword says, examining a, a truth about our world that people rarely look at. And you think back to when that book was written, we didn't have the um, great advances in pharmaceuticals that, that we have now, where many common diseases were in fact deadly, and we lost a lot of people in war from small wounds mm -hmm. because of it. So, but war and disease always follow hand in hand, and it still does today. If you look at a community through those eyes, well, decline and problems follow hand in hand. If your community is in decline, you will have all sorts of social set problems that you won't have if your community is in a growth mode. It's, they're just inexorably linked. So if you look at the future of Abilene, the fact that we have all of these folks engaged in trying to move us forward into a growth pattern again is a very, very big thing. It's not something that just should be of only interest to Chamber of Commerce or the city or the county. It should be of interest to every citizen who wants this community to be a good place for children, grandchildren, and beyond. It's a very critical point of our history that we get to choose. A lot of these things are going to be going to the voting public pretty soon, so everybody's going to get to have a say in this. Yeah, certainly, and that just makes growth better in my opinion when you have everyone working on it but you involve everyone in the process because then everyone feels like they have a say everyone has some sort of stake in the growth that's going on in Abilene you know whether it's the school board's mm -hmm. you know proposal that they're working on whether it's a chamber event whether it's an ADA event city commission county commission hospital someone has a stake in one of those things and involving the town of Abilene whether it's just at the ballots you know at the polls or whether it's in community focus groups whether it's in just simply surveying the community to see what they want to see in Abilene providing the community members a stake in the growth of Abilene really hits home more so than reading it in the newspaper and not really knowing much about it but hitting the hearts of the people that live here really just increase growth and kind of make that growth more sustained and more supported from the ground up because everyone has a deeper connection to the growth. I know the Chamber's organizing a local government forum in the coming weeks or month here, I think November sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, would you explain what that is, why you're doing it, and how people can participate? Sure. Uh, the local government forum right now is uh, scheduled for November 5th, so here in just short of two weeks. And the chamber kind of had this idea to just bring in the local government entities, which includes the city commission, the county commission, the hospital board, and the school board of education. We had the idea to bring those four entities together to simply have a conversation. You know, it's not going to be a debate. It's not going to be any sort of let's throw pitchforks at people. It's simply a venue for conversation about what they're doing in their specific entities and kind of a question and answer period where we'll have some questions moderated toward them of kind of the trends they see happening or different things that they're doing or their opinions on policies that maybe have been brought up by the general public. And then at the conclusion of that, you know, discussion in the moderated discussion, we will have a question and answer period from the audience. So, you know, as the community members if you want to be involved in this, the biggest thing I can tell you is to head down to the Eisenhower Center Library Auditorium on November 5th at 7 o'clock and just be there and you can you know, ask questions and have your voice heard and just really get involved on the discussion that is going to be facilitated through all the public entities. We are planning to take our cameras at this event and film it and put it on our Eagle Local Channel 2 as well as our web presence on, mm -hmm. the, on the Salina Post under Eagle uh, TV. But boy, we sure would like to see people come. Uh, uh, it's so good for the elected representatives to see people's faces in the crowd showing interest in what they're discussing. It helps good governance happen. So. If you're available, please come. We'd appreciate that, and, and it's good for our community. There'll be refreshments. Probably cookies, <laughs> if I 
Tori's a notorious baker, or she she can she can provide a total distraction on a plate at any meeting. So very good. One more thing, uh, as we look at Abilene's opportunities, uh, I had lots of conversations. I have I get to see a lot of people, and we've been very visible about economic development at App in here at Eagle on these on this channel too. So I get a lot of conversations mm -hmm. about it. I was in a conversation one time, and and the, the person was speaking to me about their vision of Abilene's future, and it was really codified in this in these words: "Quaint little village. We want our quaint little village to stay the way it is." I was in upstate New York and New England during the '80s, where the quaint little villages were everywhere you looked. Mm -hmm. Uh, majority of those quaint little villages are are um, probably the biggest economic drivers of government payments in them. And the one I lived in at the time, for the longest time, it certainly is. Once had a vibrant downtown, two hardware stores when I was there going to college. Mm -hmm. Now has none, um, but there's a lot of young people standing on street corners every day. Uh, government payments probably the number one generator of dollars into the community. That's a community that's not in decline, that's a community that has died. Yep. There's always a, that fork in the road and one road leads to decline and one leads to growth. There is no stopping at the intersection and waiting. You would just get to choose which way you go because mm -hmm. staying the same leads to decline. So. Abilene's history, which is so rich, the room we're sitting in is full of Abilene's history. If we want to preserve this, you have to find a way of growing some section of your economy where there are people with resources who will give to the preservation of the community. It cannot be preserved by staying the same. Buildings decline, they have to be repaired, and there has to be some income flow to do that. If you look at downtown Abilene, I, I, when I look at downtown Abilene and our infrastructure and the architecture, I see New Market, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. where my daughter re most recently lived, her oldest daughter before she came back to Kansas. New Market was a mill town, has a mill trace through town, has all had all the old abandoned, empty mill buildings along that mill trace. One of the most beautiful places you could look at, but it was just one of those dead places that died after that industrial revolution stopped. There's a uh, um, University of New Hampshire, Durham is about the same distance away as, as K-State is okay. from us. And through the process that I didn't, I wasn't there when I went through, I just saw the change over time. Somebody made a decision to try to grow that town and they did it with, by, by making it a cool place to live for young people. So they pulled a lot of those college students, married college students, which my daughter was one of. They started pulling those people in, their duplexes and, and, and old houses that were made into group places to live. Then as people chose to live there, the entrepreneurship started to fill in the little downtown, the little blueberry shop and the little art store and the mm -hmm. little, you know, little coffee shops all over the place. Those places came in, the little pizza parlors and then full sit down restaurant sort of a thing. Now the old mill buildings, when I was there two years ago, the old mill buildings, which are hundreds years old, had renovation was nearly complete on them. Bottom level retail space was almost full and the upstairs were renovated into both um, places to live and places to work. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the opportunity that, that Abilene can find itself in. I think Abilene would be a great place for, for young people to live in, in our architecture downtown. You know, the loft apartments in Salina are always full. Um, Manhattan's really out of space. You recently oh, yeah. came from Manhattan. <laughs> it's just out of space. Out of space and out of the college, uh, college budget. So. Right. So, you know, Abilene is, could be the next really cool place for somebody to live. I sure hope we can find the momentum to get 
to that, that'd be a great thing for Abilene. You bring young people in, not only do you fill up downtown, but you bring young people in, you, you bring longevity of, of taxpayers in, mm -hmm. you, you bring new ideas, you bring creativity in, you bring energy in. I think that would be such a great thing if we have an outcome along those lines. We'd like to see a lot more Tories. <laughs> I think so too, you know, and the downtown of Abilene, kind of like you exactly said, it really has that structure already. You know, most of the buildings downtown have an upstairs and a ground floor, and a lot of them have basements that could be turned into nightclubs or basements that could just be turned into a little book nook, you know, something like that that caters to the young people, but that the existing population would still have interest in too. And I think that the efforts that the city and that the different places are going to are really making that effort because they have the incentivization plan and they have plans in place that will maybe, you know, lighten, enlighten the Abilene community to that. So. Tori, I should thank you for coming. Thank you. The clock tells us we're done. It certainly but does. How quickly time goes by when you're talking about fun and positive things, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Will you come back? Of course. Of course. Bring Certainly. cookies? I, you know, I could have some cookies here next time. I mean, if you you'd be eating cookies, it, we could probably get an so. audience. Yeah, we could definitely. Do a live audience sure. For the next one. Let's do that. Folks, thank you for watching our town on Eagle Communications, and thank you, Tori Barrett, Abilene Area Chamber of Commerce Executive Director. Have a great day.